Hey folks, it's Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Got a few things going on here on the farm today. I want to take you around, we'll show you. First thing we got to do is we got to start moving some vehicles out of the way. I've got a truckload of gravel coming in. Actually, I have four truckloads of gravel coming in today to help with the farm road that goes up to the tobacco barn and to help with our road that goes up to our house. Now when you have a gravel road you have a lot of maintenance and we've got to take care of it before it turns into a big rutted mud hole. So I'm going to put down some gravel today, got a few other little errands to run around the house. Well, the first thing we're going to do is start moving vehicles around here so that the gravel truck can get in and do its job. Alright, so let's have a little bit of fun, maybe you'll learn something. my Cummins. Yeah. You guys, this truck's my favorite thing in the whole world. Besides my wife. The gravel truck's already here with his first load. We got to get down here. I'm gonna have you dump the clean stone in a pile right there. Okay. Uh, and that way I can get to it and I got a skid loader up here. I can oh. move it around. I want to widen this out. So if you got in position here and could come around and make this a double lane instead of a single lane. Dump it on the grass? Yep, dump it on the grass. Just make it a double lane instead of a single lane. As much hard work as I put into that grass. Right. But um, just bring it all the way around, making, making another full lane right here. And once you get right here, if you still got rock, because you probably still will have rock, they just dump it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spread a little bit right yeah. here. We got too many vehicles and too much. Just yeah. turning around stuff is yeah. uh, it's getting to be a pain. So that'd be load number two. Load one down there. Huh? Load two right here. The goal is to actually get over in here bit, yeah. about that far okay. so that this turns easier to make with a big uh -huh. trailer. So guys, what you need to know is that this is a huge part of farming and a huge part of getting a start here. So we're starting from scratch. This was all bare land. This was a big briar patch before we bought it. So we've got the gravel truck, the rock truck coming up here, and there's several different projects we're going to be doing. I'm going to take you down and show you one of the biggest hazards we have is that the rock truck's dump bed is going to be up higher than the power line. So we've got to guide him through there. So he's coming up through here now. I'm going to circle back down and I'll show you what we're doing. So you run into all sorts of troubles when you're running a gravel truck on soft ground. So that's another issue that we're going to have. We're going to be putting some rock down on some new land, which is right here in front of the house. We just basically needed a little more area to pull big trailers and park them. So we have a big old flatbed trailer hooked to the back of the truck and we need a big place to park it. It's, a, it's a rock and gravel and Keeping things from being muddy and a huge mess is a big thing, big part of farming, a big part of starting an enterprise like this. And if you guys are new to the channel, the enterprise is going to be a uh, grass-fed beef operation and a pasture poultry operation. So here's the truck and there's the power line. So I'm going to get here and I'm going to guide him to dump his truck back. This thing's set up with chains on the back of it, and the chains hold it open as far as they can hold it. And the issue is down here we had some washing. There he goes. He's gonna go as fast as he can go. And the rock's not coming out quite as smooth as we'd like it. Go, 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 he needs to go faster. So we're trying to get away with only running three loads of rock today, but we might end up running five loads of rock. If he goes faster, it'll be a big help to me. And that's it. That's the load. So what he'll do, he'll go back to the quarry. He'll be back here in about 45 minutes and we'll do our second load. We're going to ride down here and talk to him about the way he dumped and everything like that and make sure that he knows exactly what we're looking for. Good communication is very important here. But it looks pretty good. I'm riding over it now. It looks really good. So let me show you a little bit about what kind of rock we're putting down here. So this is called Crush Run and it has rock dust 
in small gravels and larger gravels in there and this is what you build your road base with okay so around here where we live the soil has a lot of clay in it now clay tends to draw in or soak up rock okay so driveway maintenance is going to be a huge thing for us if we don't do it right when we get started when the ground is wet and muddy and mucky and snowy and nasty in the winter time the gravels tend to sink down in there so you want to keep a good base and that way you don't have a driveway that's all rutted out and nasty i don't know if you guys have ever pulled into anybody's gravel driveway or long gravel driveway and it's all washed out and nasty well it's because they don't have a crown okay so a crown meaning the driveway surface here needs to be high on the top and crowned down to the sides and have like two inches of drop on each side so it's a fine art to making a beautiful driveway we'll ride over here and you'll really be able to tell how much gravel that he put down this is 16 tons of gravel so it gets a pretty wide area of coverage we're gonna get four three or four loads as much time as he has on his hands is how much rock we'll have today so there's the new rock and that will turn the same color gray as this it's a little bit moist so normally when you get rock from the quarry it'll be a little bit moist it's always a little bouncy the first few times you ride over it and then this little spot here we'll dress up with the tractor we'll fix all that so it's going to be a little bit bumpy right there until we fix it with the tractor right in here all in all guys this is a pretty cool little project we have going so we see we only have one lane right here and we need it to be widened. So we're gonna take the gravel from here all the way over to here, all the way around, I'll show you. All the way around here, we'll have another lane. And that way, if we have a great big trailer, like a fifth wheel trailer, we can pull it right here and park it and still get around with our cars and trucks. So guys, I think I have too many trucks. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite a fleet back there. My wife's truck, my farm truck, $100 truck, the van for traveling, the big white Dodge for towing big stuff, and the silver Dodge for mucking around in the mud and beating the crap out of. Everything has its purpose, but we've got a Willys Jeep on the way, and we've got the Bronco over here too. I think I'm going to have to thin the herd at some point. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how Mrs. Stony Ridge takes it. By the way, folks, this is our fourth wedding anniversary today our fourth wedding anniversary so we're gonna have a nice dinner at a local winery be pretty cool it's gonna be great our fourth wedding anniversary awesome so pretty soon we've got to get on these trees right here we've got some fruit trees and we've got some maple trees and we've got some weeping willow trees we got to get them in the ground pretty quick while the wet season's here if not we may have to water them all summer long and then plant them again in the fall. One thing I've learned is setting yourself up for failure is planting a tree in the spring. Although they're beautiful, you go to the store, you go to like Home Depot or Lowe's or your local nursery and you see those beautiful trees and they're all green and you put them in the ground and two weeks later they're dead because it's not the wet season and springtime is the wrong time to plant a tree. It really is. You need to plant your trees when it's cold weather, when the ground's not frozen, and when it's the wet time of year, like October, November, December, January. Y'all might have noticed that my flagpole is struggling a little bit. We've had some crazy, crazy winds here lately. Check out my flag here. So the lower flag, the uh, Don't Tread on Me flag, has been torn loose from its uh, little hook. It's really windy out today, but I'm going to try to do this flag thing and try to pull that guy down and reattach it so I'm not ashamed of my flagpole. It's kind of trashy having your flag flapping in the wind like that. So let's see if we can get that fixed. This is a custom made flagpole that I made myself out of a piece of irrigation pipe. So there's a piece of irrigation pipe here. I'll show you how it works. We we're pouring the concrete for the shop and we had some extra concrete. So right here is the irrigation pipe and it just slips in and out of this hole. Okay. And inside that hole is a piece of two and a half inch PVC pipe and it goes all the way up. So if we can catch a 10 second period where the wind calms down, we'll hop on the back of the gator, we'll shoot that pipe up in the air and then we'll put another, actually we're just going to do a temporary fix here. We'll zip a zip tie on the lower flag right here so that it flies correctly and it doesn't look like trash. Up we go. Uh. The biggest concern is I don't let my American flag hit the ground. So we're gonna have to gently lower this thing down. Don't want that to happen. Bring her on down here. There we go. Now this little latch system I've designed. Whew. 
America, baby. Really a lot of wind today. This little latch system I designed right here, clips on here, but I really need something heavier for this flag. It actually tore loose the, uh, the little ring in there, the little grommet that holds the flag in place. We'll use a zip tie, get her looking nice. Get her back up there and make it look pretty. Come on, baby. You ain't that fat. Oh, good Lord. Maybe you are. All right. Slip it back over. That's it. There we go. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's how my flagpole works. America, baby, is America. That's what I stand for. Let's go look at the honeybees. So right here are the honeybee hives, right above the orchard and right beside the garden. And we also have a few fruit trees on the side of the garden, a few plum trees. So we keep our honeybees close to the garden. That way they'll pollinate our vegetables and make some yummy stuff. Nothing like walking into a cornfield full of honeybees. It's really, really cool. So this winter we lost two hives. We lost this hive right here and we lost this hive right here. That's a 50% loss. That's a big deal. When we moved from the city out to the country, we had 14 beehives. Now all we have is two. I'm not sure what's killing the bees, but something is. Pretty cool. If you look really close, you can see them carrying in their uh, pollen on the back of their legs, a little white speck on the back of their legs. So that's one hive. There's the other hive, and those guys are doing pretty good too. We'll uh, get into a little more detail on the honeybees this year as time goes on. So as the year progresses on and it warms up enough for me to get in these honeybees without harming them, we'll get in the honeybee hive and we'll talk all about what's going on with the bees and how they're doing and any detail that you might want. I am not a master beekeeper. I'm not a certified master beekeeper or anything like that. Um, I did take some courses on keeping bees before I did it and I encourage you if you're interested in bees before you get them, go take a course at your local agricultural center there in your local town. So one of the viewers asked me, Josh, what's that fuzzy thing right there? Well, the fuzzy thing is a microphone and normally you wouldn't have to have the fuzzy thing on, but if you're out in the wind and you're running and gunning like me and you're making videos, then you gotta have the little fuzzy nipper thing right there or it'll sound like this. That's no fun. I'm sorry if that blasted your ears. All right, so we're getting all lined up right here. Basically, he'll pop the gate again and he's gonna take off down through here and spread gravel all the way down. Now he'll put it in gear and the gravel here will shift. There you go. And he'll run with it. Yeah, got stuck. There he goes. It's making us another lane right there. So the goal was to start up here and come all the way through to here and then dump a pile right here so that I could spread it out in this area and make it a more of a complete circle. Well, we didn't make that goal. We didn't make the first two goals, but that's okay. I always think that gravel is gonna go further than it does and then it doesn't really go as far as I'd like it to. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson in gravelology today and you got to check on the bees. Pretty soon we'll be getting into the honeybee hives together and we'll teach you a whole lot about the honeybees and how things work in the hive. We'll show you the different kinds of bees and just a lot of good information on honeybees. We'll take you and we'll show you and we'll also show you how much honeybees hate electronics. This little fuzzy thing and the microphones, man, they love to attack them. I guess they think they're a little bear. That's like a miniature bear. So we're gonna go take some water down to the chickens with our fancy apparatus I just figured out how to do and have some fun here on the farm today and take my wife out for a nice dinner. Thanks a lot, guys. Come on back and see us here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I appreciate you. See you next time. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge. So we got to go write this guy a big fat check. This is about $345 per load of crush run. I know it's a lot more expensive in other areas of the country, so I'm pretty happy with it. We got a little bit more rock to spread in the next couple days. 
and I thought I'd take you along and show you. So thanks a lot for watching today, guys. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click the little bell down there. It'll notify you when I post a new video, and we'll see you next time. All right? Woo!